Hey everybody, welcome class, welcome. And a little, little three fingered knife today. Oops, dropped something. Let's grab another one out of the bag here. I'm gonna show you what a Corby bolt is. If my back were doing better today, I'd reach over and pick that up, but that's, uh, I don't think that's gonna happen. <laughs> Hopefully my back will make it through this, <coughs> this live session. Getting old, getting old, okay. What I have here is some maroon linen micarta. Okay, we're going to go over some tips and tricks on how to shape micarta uh, today and how to deal with it whenever you have a big bolt or a big uh, pin in there. The way these work is a male and female that screw together like this. And they attach that. Okay, inside there like that. There you go. All right. And what I've done is I have cut that off that was protruding, I'm sticking out some, like so. You have to countersink those where they'll sit down in there, okay? But I cut those off on the bandsaw because what can happen is, is whenever you're grinding this, it can get too hot. Whenever it gets too hot, it's going to leave a discolored ring around there. So it, usually on the uh, maroon micarta, it'll turn it kind of yellow. It gets too hot around there, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. I'm using a uh, TW90 grinder, and I have a used 80 grit on here. It's a, uh, a 3M ceramic. We'll see if it has enough, enough bite left on it to see if it'll cut, okay? I've been using it for a while, so we'll see. I'm gonna utilize the zoom feature here real fast. There we go. All right, get that tripod directed down a little bit. Okay, now what we need to do is grind off the lanyard. I don't like to cut the lanyards in the uh, uh, bandsaw. Whenever you have a hollow tube like that, a lot of times it wants to, as it's cut through, it wants to grab and start doing stuff and it might you know, derail your, your blade. So I just like to cut off the solid ones. This grinds down really easy. We're not gonna overheat it to where it's gonna mess up anything, okay? I don't use a, a platen very often at all. A flat platen, if you don't know what that is, it's one of these deals where it's straight up and down. <clears throat> Excuse me, and the belt is rolling across the front of it. I don't like it because it's hard on your belts. Uh, I get a better, just a, a better result whenever I use a wheel. Now the thing is, is if you have your uh, steady rest here, and if it's sitting flat, I have this at an angle, if it's sitting flat, you're going to get a, a pretty bad uh, angle whenever you grind this off, okay? So I'll show you here really quick. Now you can see here that that's at an angle, okay? It's going down like this because we're putting that on here and this is round, okay? If this were flat, then we would get that cutting straight across. But what I'm doing is I'm barely hitting the steel back in here, okay? I'm just barely hitting it. I go back in and, and flatten that off. I'm just not a big fan of a, a plat. If you like it, that's great, okay? There's sometimes I use them, but like making folders and stuff, and there are a few little things I'll use a platen for, but very rarely do I use one. But if you like it, that's fine. Um, but whenever you are working with, like if you're profiling a blade, and if you have a, uh, a, a work platform or a steady rest or whatever way you want to call it, make sure it's angled up to where it will go through on a plane, we'll go through the center of that, okay? If it's flat, and especially in this TW90, it's set down a little bit lower. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> it's flat like that. 
then whenever you profile something on a wheel, it's really gonna get a, a mean, mean angle on there. It's gonna be real steep, okay? So just something to watch out. Grab my mask. I have a little system down here that has pipes, it's plumbed all throughout, well, not all throughout the shop, but through a lot of the, the shop. And wherever, wherever dust is made, I have a little port here. <clears throat> but for some reason, I'm wanting to lose my voice. <coughs> Excuse me. I did another class earlier live on Facebook, and I'm migrating, uh, trying to get people to migrate over to YouTube. And so I'm kind of, I don't talk a whole lot <laughs> during the day because I'm by myself. So I, I talked for a while in that, during that class, and it kind of kind of shot my, my, my voice here. So I've got a little remote control up here. I can just turn this on, this air on. Okay, now, get all unhooked here, you can see it's turning yellow in some places and that's burning it, okay, I'll show you how to avoid that here in a minute. I'm going to go ahead and change up some things on this really quickly. Shot. So I'm going to see if this could do any more work for me. Barely. that cleaned up back here a little bit a little bit of a miss back here but that's no big deal now I'm gonna change belts and change change attachments here real fast man <coughs> voice doesn't want to work today I, I, attachment okay I have another grinder over here and so sometimes whenever I'm filming and I'm just using one grinder I get kind of kind of ahead of myself in something Okay, now I just need to scoop out all those fingers down in there, all right? Let me slow this down about 40%.
the reason I put that spray on there, this is TFL 50 wet lubricant. Okay. Now that keeps the belt cool, keeps the material cool. Okay. Now there's a, a pretty common misconception out there that you have to have brand new belts whenever you're working micarta. Okay. That isn't true. If you will just put a lubricant on there, then that will cool that down and it will keep you from burning that. Okay. I didn't put the lubricant on whenever I was first profiling, but whenever I did this under here, I did. And you can see that there's no yellow under there. So that's good. Got a little bit more to do. Okay, now, I'm gonna put my wheel back on. This is a 10 inch wheel. Doesn't really matter, you can use a 10, 12, an eight, whatever you wanna do on this. Right here. going to start shaping this contour a little bit and I'm going to show you how to do it on the uh, disc sander too okay so we're going to do it a couple of different ways you gear back up And here's the thing. Some people will want to shape that on the slack portion right here, okay? Whenever you do that, and you have large bolts or large pins, these are quarter inch, okay? What that's gonna do is you're shaping it up here. It's gonna wanna shape the softer stuff, which is the handle material, before it shapes the, the pins or the bolts, whichever way you have it. Okay, so that's going to make it lumpy. Okay, these uh, the area around the bolts are going to be raised up, so you want that to be flat. Okay, you want it to be nice and smooth. You don't want this little mountain range going on with these hills. Okay, so that's why I did that on this wheel. Now I'm going to take you over here. Hold on, hold on to the disc sander. All right. Want to come off, so I'm just gonna get a little bit more spray. This is an old uh, Harbor Freight one. Okay. Go. Let me shut my port and open up this port right here for my air. Okay. I got a bad batch. taken off enough to really turn on the air yet what I'm doing is I took off some up here on this side like that and I flipped it over and did some on the underside I'm gonna come over here now and do this top I'm just gonna kind of move this over and stand in front of you a little bit okay I know it's kind of messed up right now
Okay, now, I advise you to get as much equipment as possible with variable speed. And here's another disc I've got right here with variable speed. I could have showed, could have shown you on that, but I just wanted to do that on that Harbor Freight one. Had a little bit of rougher sandpaper on it. I didn't feel like changing it out. So let's go back over the TW90. All right, let's get all this stuff straightened out. I have, what the problem is, is I have a, a shop that has, um, on one side it's, it's elevated, about three or four, probably four inches, okay? So I have a step down right right here. <laughs> so I have a little platform I built out, so whenever I'm, I'm filming, I have to extend or uh, shorten one tripod leg and all this other stuff. So it's kind of a pain, but it's all right. We'll figure it out, get it all figured out. And now I'm gonna to switch to a 220 grid. Okay, we're going from an 80 to down to a 220. It's a 220 J Flex. I like these quite a bit. I also like these. These 223M ceramics. 707E. It's pretty cool. Very, very good belt. You get that from uh, knifeandgun.com. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to shape. Put this on here. I'm going to get out those, those 80 grit scratches. Some people will go with like a 150 right now. I haven't used one of those on a handle material in a long time. I just used to skip down to 220. Okay, now this isn't a brand new belt so we see we got a little burn got a little yellow right back here there we go that fixed that real easy didn't have to change belts at all Just lightly hitting that. A really good time to check your symmetry. See how everything's looking. Checking it all out, make sure it all looks good. Okay. It's like everything's even except right here. And there's a little issue right in there that it wasn't even, okay? So now I'm going to put it on the slack portion. Start just smoothing everything out, okay? Now, if you notice, this thing's looking a little bit darker. Now we're getting into finer belts. It's beginning to darken up. It's down here. It's still still 60 grit or 80 grit, and it has more of a pink look, reddish pink look. And what I want to do is on my carta, it's going to require a 220 or a 320 uh, to uh, kind of round this back here. I don't want it really round, but I want to knock these 
these uh, little edges off, okay? I like to make a knife that will sit in your hand like that. And it feels good, but it, I, don't, I don't make it too round. I want a little bit of a little shelf to sit in there, but not too flat, not too round, okay? So I'm just gonna roll this, okay? Just roll it. I'll change that angle just a little bit for you. There we go, probably a little bit better. Okay, we had a little hiccup there. I looked over, I saw it flash out of the corner of my eye and it said YouTube had stopped. So hopefully it doesn't do that anymore. <laughs> so I'm just rolling that. I've rounded that, that back back in there just a little bit. Just make makes it nice and comfy, okay? It's still sharp back here. Still sharp under here. I'm gonna leave these. I'm not gonna really round those. I'm gonna knock the harsh edge off here in a little while. But I'm gonna start shaping this because that that's going straight through there. Okay, it's going straight through. We need to kind of curve it a little bit. Okay. I'm going to grab my small wheel attachment again. I'm just going to put on here. I'm just going to roll it a little bit. Just like that. Now you might be saying, why didn't you do that earlier? Well, if I'd done that earlier, and then whenever I shape all this and round this, it's gonna kind of erase that, okay? So now that I've gotten this out here to the shape I want it to be, now I can work under here and meet it. Okay. Now this isn't too terribly drastic, okay? And I can smooth all this out and blend it all in. I don't bring it way up here, okay? I just I just don't do that. So now whenever you hold it like this, it's nice and softened in through there. But these still have little harsh edges, even though they're rounded, they're still a little sharp. So inch wide scalloped J flex belt okay this is a 220 these scallops are really handy because it keeps you from gouging your handle you don't want to push too hard okay you can you can break that seam real easy on these these little ones or just rip them in half now the reason I'm running this slowly that it, like 40% is because these little bearings can't handle it. Okay, they can't handle high speed for a long time. All I'm doing is just softening that right in through there. Put it on there and just rolling it a little bit, okay? Try to use the zoom feature a little more. <laughs> Get you a little bit closer. Like I said, this is a 220. 
kind of used, kind of been through it. Okay, still a little, a little sharp right there. Fix that. There we go. Now, we're looking good. I still have some pretty deep scratches in here running this way from whenever I profiled it. So I'm just gonna take those out. Okay, looking a lot better. Not there yet, we're not out of the woods yet. But we're looking good, getting that shape down. Okay, not quite done yet. Now, let's kick it on over to, uh, I'm gonna try a 320. That's my 220 from a minute ago. Okay, 320. I made another maroon linen micarta yesterday, so it still has remnants on there. So, 320. Spray that down. Take this out real quick. You can get a little sludge on there, so I'm just gonna wipe that off. Now look how much better that's looking already, as opposed to this other side. Looking a lot better. Okay, guys. I'm hitting all these areas up here that are rounded. Make sure I get that stuff cleaned up too. Okay. And if you notice, I'm pinching it behind that belt. I don't want to do anything on the wheel. That small wheel is going to dig a chunk out. So. If I have some scratches I need to get out, I'll just put my finger back there. Don't put it close to there. That'll mess you up. Don't pinch it hard. Just give, give it a little bit of a backing. Okay, now... I'm going to switch to this. There's the old famous, at least Facebook famous. Now that we're on YouTube, it'll be famous. <laughs> Just kidding. This is an old uh, JFlex 400, okay? It used to be yellow, as you can tell by the edges, but now it's nice and gray and nasty. So I've used it so many times for this last step. Now these don't last forever. They'll get to a point where it's just not doing any good. So you have to start over with a new one. And the way you start over is you just get a really, really used 400 and spray it down and start using it. And it'll build the, up this, this junk on here, okay? Better. Not too bad. Yeah. 
I still have these little harsh edges back here. I'm going to knock that off. Okay. One thing I want to do is grab the same thing in a one inch wide belt. Okay. I've got this little brother right here. Used 400 with a bunch of TFL 50 on it. Now, if you order this, you can get it online. You have to Google it. But, uh, Order it, make sure you get the wet, don't get the dry. Some people use WD-40, who've learned this trick from me, but I just like TFL. WD-40 is cheaper. I just don't like it as much as this. Now, you're getting inside all those fingers in here, okay? Getting that cleaned up. Still a little a little gross, but get it cleaned up. Cleaned up without burning. Now see, everyone I've ever talked to looking good. Really not going to shape anything. Not going to be removing a lot of stock. Just a little bit, just a few thousandths of an inch. Okay. Not bad. Now, one thing we want to do is take this tape off. It must be smarter than the tape. And clean up. Right up in here, okay? Right there is gross. Clean that up. we are. It's a little sharp. Okay. Right in there it's a little sharp so I'm just going to kind of do that. Kind of take that edge off. Like so. Okay. One thing we can do is take you over the buffer. Let me do something really fast. Clean up a few things. Make sure everything's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, satin finish is looking nice. I need to do it back here. I've done it under here. I need to do it back here. If I do it on this wheel, it's going to bum, 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 bum. You can have ripples going down there. Okay. That smaller wheel is going to leave ripples. That's a big, big problem. Beautiful. Beautimus. Beautimus. 
one little spot. I don't know if I have enough. We take out a little bit, a little bit uh, rougher grit. I've got a little spot that didn't didn't clean it up. Let me try 320. back to the other belt. Get it cleaned up. that edge off. We're looking good. Let's go buff this really quickly. And y'all don't look at the shop, guys. Don't look at the shop. Filthy. I'm in production mode right now. So I made a mess. Big time. Big time mess. Okay. We can leave this satin finished bolts or we can mirror polish them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that lanyard, get that edge taken off the lanyard too. Something just flew out. Good. a lot better I think it really brings that color richness out quite a bit or you can leave it like that and it's dirty but I only really like that look right there can you see yourself in that yeah check check your hair <laughs> anyway anyway just about done show you the Pretty side. Of course, this is filthy. It needs to be needs to be sharpened. We'll clean it up. Hopefully, it'll make a customer happy. Feels great, just like this. Lessons and get a lot, lot better camera angles, a lot better sound with the lapel mic, with better lighting. Got a okay. Looks like we had another hiccup on uh, <laughs> a timeout type of deal. Anyway, so if you want to learn more, and go to knifemakingvideos.com. I own that site and we'll get a lot of good information on there. I've got like 250 or 275 like five minute videos on there. They go way deeper than what uh, is found here on this channel. So anyway, but this is a, a good start right here. So if you check out knifemakingvideos.com, put in the coupon code LIVE, L-I-V-E, you'll get 15% off your monthly membership, okay? So uh, y'all have a good day. We'll catch you soon.